is P an increasing or decreasing function? So that is 4.1.1, right? Uh, we have P of X, which is equals to 1 divided by 3 to the power X. So let's go ahead and find out whether this function is increasing or decreasing. How are we going to possibly do that? Let's start by substituting x is equals to 1 and see what we get. So if you substitute x is equals to 1 into p of x, you're going to get 1 divided by 3, right? And then if you substitute x is equals to 2, you're going to get p of 2 being equals to 1 divided by 9. And then if you substitute x is equals to 3, you're going to get p of 3 being equals to 1 divided by 27. Now it's actually easy to see that when the values of x are increasing, the values of y are decreasing, right? Uh, when x is equals to 1, we have 1 divided by 3. When x is equals to 2, we have 1 divided by 9. And then when x is equals to 3, we have 1 divided by 27. We can see from that test that our function is decreasing, right? Yeah, as the values of x increase, the values of y decrease. And then 4.1.2, determine p inverse, uh, the inverse of p in the form y is equals to. So we have um, p of x being equals to 1 divided by 3 to the power of x. Instead of p of x, let's just put y in there. So we have y being equals to 1 divided by 3 to the power x. So when you want to find the inverse, the first thing you want to do is to swap x and y, right? So if we go ahead and do that, we're going to have x in place of y, right? And then in place of x, we now put y, right? And then from there on, all you just need to do is solve for y. Solve for y. Uh, as soon as you solve for y, then you're going to have uh, the function you're looking for. So how are we going to possibly do that, right? Y is up here. We have to bring it down by introducing log on both sides, right? So we're going to have log of X being equals to log of 1 divided by 3 to the Y. Now you just have to recall that under log loss, log of A to the B, is equals to b multiplied by log of a. So if we just apply that idea right here, we're going to have log of x being equals to y log of 1 divided by 3. So we can go ahead and divide both sides by log of uh, 1 divided by 3 in attempt to isolate uh, y, right? And then if we do that, we're going to end up having y is equals to log of x base 1 divided by 3. And that is the inverse of uh, p of x. Uh, the following equation, 4.1.3, let's write down the domain of p inverse. What I want you to know is that uh, the domain, so the domain of f inverse, is equals to the range of f, the range of f, right? So we're looking for the domain of p inverse. So actually, we can find the domain of p inverse by just finding the range of p, right? And then for our function, p of x is equals to 1 divided by 3 to the x. You can see that uh, the range is going to be y is greater than 0. We are saying that to say that the domain of P inverse will be, uh, so now we have the domain X is greater than zero, right? And then uh, the last question, 4.1.4, write down the equation of the asymptote of P of X minus five. So for any exponential function in the form A, b to the x plus q this q here will always be your asymptote right so let's go ahead and see what we're going to have for p of x minus 5 this will be equals to 1 divided by 3 to the power x 
minus 5. It's easy to see that in this function, our Q is actually minus 5. So our asymptote is that Y is equal to minus 5.